So, uh, welcome everyone to my talk about uh, Bridge. Uh, it will be mainly about QGIS, but I will also talk a bit about the upcoming RTS Pro version, just briefly, um, and also a bit about ArcMap Bridge that we also have. So, as Enoch already told, um, my name is Sander. I work at Geocat. Uh, since a year or two, I, uh, I'm on the Bridge team. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually the Bridge team. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm also getting help now, uh, uh, so that's nice. Uh, the, the team is actually growing. It's good. So let's start. Um, I have, this is my table of what's, so uh, table of contents. So it's, first I'm going to um, speak a bit about what Bridge is, because I'm not aware if everyone is familiar with what Bridge is and what it does. Um, then I'm going to talk about what has been uh, during the past year, so from the last Phosphor-G to now, um, and uh, what we are currently developing, so what's next, and I would also like to pick your brains a bit, at least if there are any users in the room, uh, about what you think that is missing in, uh, in Bridge at the moment. <clears throat> so let's start with what Bridge is. Um, Bridge is a, is a Python plugin for, uh, for QGIS, so you can uh, download it through the plugin manager in QGIS. Um, it's, so it's effectively the, the open source counterpart of uh, Bridge for RGS that already has a long history uh, at uh, Geocat. Um, currently, yeah, it's almost exclusively developed uh, by Geocat, so by us, so we, I mean, it is an open source thing, but uh, no one is really contributing. That's always a, that saddens me a bit, but uh, I hope that's going to change in the future. Um, so historically, because we already had other bridge versions for, for ArcGIS, we immediately started with 4.0 in QGIS, so that's always a bit confusing to people, like what happened to 3 and 2, and those are actually non-QGIS versions. Um, Bridge uses uh, a library called Bridge Tile. Uh, that is a, a library that we also created, and that more or less is a Python version of the GeoStyler uh, uh, library tool. I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's like a whole framework almost, uh, that exists for Node.js, and we took out uh, the parts that we need to convert from QML style into GeoStyler, um, but then a Python JSON version of the GeoStyler, and uh, then straight into SLD, Mapfile, or Mapbox.gl. Um, that's also what we support. Uh, Bridge is available in two varieties. We have a, a community edition, enterprise edition, that is uh, paid, so then uh, you pay us, and we give you nice maintenance and support and so on. And, uh, we, uh, uh, can help make new features and so on if that's desired. Um, Bridge can publish QGIS map layers uh, to, uh, so th that means the map layers or the geodata and the style, the symbology, uh, to GeoServer. Uh, it can publish to file based data stores, so that means you have sh the option to publish shape files, geo packages and rasters will be published as, uh, to a GeoTIFF um, data store. But it can also publish to PostGIS databases. Uh, if you have uh, the credentials to do so directly, you can do that. That's uh, uh, the quickest and easiest way. Or you can also let the importer extension by GeoServer handle your import for you if you don't have access to PostGIS. Uh, it can also publish to Map Server. But because Map Server does not have a REST API, uh, that is still done through classic FTP upload. Um, then uh, uh, one of the features that Bridge also has is that it can publish metadata from your QGIS layer uh, to GeoNetwork in this case. So it converts the, uh, the, the QGIS metadata to an ISO 139 compliant record, and it then uh, pushes that to GeoNetwork. And you can also do offline and online publishing. So you can also publish to your disk 
create the, 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 the data files and the style files and so on on disk and do whatever you like with it, uh, run it locally or publish by hand or whatever. So, <clears throat> um, what did we do uh, the last year? We have uh, gone from 4.1, which was still during the last Phosphor G, if I'm not mistaken, to 4.3 now, that which uh, 4.3 was released just only last week. Uh, we did lots of minor bug fixes during the year, so we increased the stability. And most of the improvements focused on, on GeoServer users. So uh, one of the things we did for the 4.3 release which was also the result of the Bolsena code sprint, actually. Um, so we teamed up with the GeoServer people to create uh, uh, an improvement for the importer extension uh, in GeoServer. So if you importer can help you get data into PostGIS uh, via the GeoServer route, so you're, uh, that's what I meant with if you don't have direct access to PostGIS, you can do that through importer. Uh, but the, the problem was that if layers, if you delete a layer in GeoServer, um, then importer does not have the rights to drop a table uh, in PostGIS. So if you would republish a couple of times, you would end up with a lot of clutter in your uh, PostGIS database, lots of tables with the same name and a numeric suffix like two, three, four, et cetera. Um, so uh, I said to the GeoServer guys, like, I want to get that rid of that so that we actually can overwrite an existing uh, table. So uh, that has been fixed now. Uh, so I'm really happy that that is uh, possible now to actually overwrite existing tables in PostGIS. Um, we also fixed the shapefile SOD attribute mapping. It also is related to importer, so you can... Um, um, for importer only accept shape files, unfortunately. So if you have locally geo package, um, then it has to convert them to shape file, shortening the attribute names, and that broke the style map sometimes, or the mapping to the attribute value. Um, so we fixed that. Uh, then the uh, direct access publishing had some flaws that we repaired in uh, Map Libre or Mapbox uh, factor tile publishing also. And uh, layer grouping was not working as I wanted it to, so I changed that as well. Um, also recently, we added, uh, mainly for the, for the workshops that uh, were done uh, earlier uh, this week, we added a quick start tutorial for GeoServer people so that they can actually see how can I use Bridge to, to publish uh, something quickly uh, to GeoServer. How do I set it up? Um, and uh, last year I said like we, we were going to move like completely to GeoStyler, like uh, the original GeoStyler, um, but uh, we haven't had uh, time to, to do that yet, so it's still using bridge style, our own library under the hood. Um, so that actually did not change. So what's, uh, what's next? Uh, it's not really state of bridge anymore, it's more like the future of bridge. Um, so uh, we are now working on bridge five, which I hope will still see the light before Christmas. Um, it features a complete interface, uh, user interface redesign, um, but don't be shocked, you'll still find everything. Um, and um, that means that the, now you have like a modal dialog, so you have, you have like a, a publish button on the toolbar, it opens a dialog, and you cannot use anything else in QGIS anymore. You need to do something with that dialog before you be, are able to close it. The new one will have a dockable window, so you can just continue working. You can have it open, you can have it closed, you can publish anytime you like. Um, then uh, you can publish the entire map still from the toolbar. So the, the, um, the publish button you have now will really be a, a one-click publish button, so you will not get an interface anymore. You can actually use that button to directly publish uh, the map. Um, and uh, you can also publish individual layers just by clicking right mouse button uh, in the table of contents of QGIS, so you can 
say, I want to move this to GeoServer, or, or you can drag and drop. I will show that later, uh, what I mean by that. Um, then uh, some users uh, would like extra authentication options. Uh, so we're going to uh, implement the OAuth2 uh, OpenID Connect workflow. And uh, we're also going to adopt the QGIS proxy settings. Currently, they are ignored by Bridge because we use the requests uh, library. Um, so there's a workaround for it. If you're interested, I can talk to you about it. Uh, but uh, the plans are to, um, <clears throat> to actually use the QGIS settings and uh, adopt those. Uh, yep. Uh, so for GeoServer, um, the workflow improvements are that, we, uh, that you can select a target workspace where you want to go, uh, where you want your data to go. And that is, that is new because currently you need to save your QGIS document first and then you're able to publish and your workspace name will always be the same as your QGIS project name. Um, so we decided let's have the ability to unlink that so that people can just say I want my data to go into this workspace. Which also means that now uh, QGIS Bridge um, will not allow you to, uh, to actually add layers to an existing workspace without removing the entire workspace, it always overrides. Uh, users have indicated like uh, we don't like that, we would actually like to add a layer and keep everything inside the workspace as is. So uh, we're going to do that, we're going to do incremental layer publishing. And uh, you will also be able to view what was published um, in, your, uh, in the target workspace. For GeoNetwork, um, also thanks to uh, uh, that's Byron Cochrane, who did uh, one of the first PRs to, uh, to, uh, to Bridge, so I was very happy. Uh, I still need to merge it because it's uh, for five, but um, uh, he has added some options for GeoNetwork, so you can actually assign records to, uh, to a group uh, and directly also to the, to, to the current catalog. Uh, you can apply um, a metadata transformation on the geo network side, so you can uh, uh, decide to which um, protocol it should use. Um, so I uh, made some teasers, so to say, like uh, what uh, what it will look like. Um, this is still subject to change, so because we're still actively developing. But to give you an idea. Um, that on the right is the, is the doc panel I was talking about. Um, so it will have uh, a, a publish context tab. So on the, in the bottom left you see the, uh, the current uh, dialog that has a publish tab and always has a view of the table of contents but a flattened view which is always a bit confusing because you don't see the layer groups uh, in there anymore. So we decided let's not do that anymore. So you will just have your QG's table of contents as is, uh, which makes more sense. And you can publish directly from your table of content by dragging and dropping or by doing the right mouse click from your, uh, from your layer. Um, then, um, let's see. Uh, yeah. Um, so you can, uh, you can select there you have this sort of geo server explorer, so to say. So you can select your target workspace there where it needs to go. You can uh, also see the layers appear in there when you publish. So they uh, they uh, they will when uh, when the publication is ready, you can see them pop up there. Um, and uh, there up there you have the what I call the SDI context. So you, in Bridge 4, you still need to select a data server and a metadata server separately. Typically, people want to keep that together. I mean, you, you either are not interested in publishing metadata at all, or you want a specific metadata server with your data server. So then you uh, make like an orchestration. You combine them into what I call this SDI context. So that's new. Um, with these buttons, you can then add or uh, remove or edit your uh, server context similar to the service tab in Bridge 4. Um, this, uh, so there you have the, the SDI um, 
context. So when you when you press edit on the SDI context, you get this uh, window, like a sub dialog, so to say, uh, where you see the server configuration with the Geo Server tab and the metadata tab. Uh, this in this case, you see a, a Geo Server configuration. Uh, you can just add the host address like you're used to in Bridge 4. And we simplified the part about data stores because uh, people indicated like data stores. Um, that was always a bit confusing in Bridge 4. Uh, you can see it here. You can, uh, uh, whoops, that was, uh, that, okay, that was too fast. <laughs> I, can I go back? Or will it, does it start again? Okay. And then just click, 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 click. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to press this. Yeah. Um, so there's this data store option, and it was not clear because people thought that the data would actually end up in this data store, which is not the case because it has a workspace prefix there. So this is actually a data store template, and that's also what we changed here. So you specify, uh, take a template from this data store in this workspace. Uh, so that we changed. Um, and then you can directly, be careful again, <laughs> uh, uh, use the PostGIS direct connect details in there if you, if you have them. You can also set um, that you need to reference um, your uh, uh, existing tables. So if it sees that it already has, um, in your QGIS project, referenced a um, PostGIS table, then it will try to uh, make a link and not upload data to, uh, to PostGIS again. So that's, uh, that was it. Um, so now I would actually like to know from you uh, who's actually using Bridge. One person. <laughs> okay. So what do you? Now I, I can I can do a direct conversation with you. So what is missing? Do you think in in Bridge for the future? Yeah. Well, or now, but at least authentication. authentication. So you're happy with that OAuth uh, thing I reported, or uh, or you're using some other authentication mechanism? Not nothing. Okay. 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 Oh, not even basic. Okay. Because oh. <laughs> we do support basic already, yeah? so you can you can use that. Um, okay. Well, then I. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, future users, potential users, uh, might also be interested in uh, giving it a shot. Like, what what do you like to see in such a tool? Is this what you expected? from this presentation? Did you, um, yeah, perhaps. OK, yeah, I, I heard about it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's cool, so. Sorry, I have to stop you and give you the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, this is a bit ad hoc. <laughs> Okay, for the people in the other room in here, uh, the uh, Geo Server, the new Geo Server 221 has new metadata capability. Yeah, that's uh, correct. Yeah, which you could probably uh, publish to, uh, directly. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also uh, in the Geo Server now there is new uh, support for language. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you could also include, you know, support for, so otherwise you would, it defeats the purpose because you'd have to go to the Geo server and then mm -hmm. complete the publishing process, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we also have some customers who are, for instance, in Canada, so they have to deal with French and English, like bilingual data sets, so they have that issue too. So uh, uh, yeah, that's definitely on our list of uh, things that we want to improve, yeah. Okay. Oh, come on. <coughs> Excuse me. Good morning. Um, can you um, do the style conversions independently of publishing to GeoServer? So if you just wanted to convert the styles, I need to sort of pull out the style conversion, the, the bridge style, I think. Would you just have to publish manually and pick up the styles from, from there? I mean, it 
just might be a nice feature to be able to only convert the styles, for example. I'm, I'm sorry, because the, the first part I did not get. <laughs> and so I've got a bit of a sore yeah. throat, so I may be able to understand. Yeah. Yeah. But I was interested in whether you can, can, you can convert the styles yeah. from QGIS and convert them into another styling format, making use of the bridge styler without going through the whole publishing process. Yes, you can do that. Yeah, okay. yeah that's, that's right. still possible. You, yeah, well, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can switch off uh, that it's not publishing symbology, so, so that it just uh, pushes the data to GeoServer. Or yeah, well, it was more the other way around, whether you could say, OK, I don't want to use GeoServer. I've just got some styles. Yeah. You know, I've got Bridge. I want some styles. I want to convert to SLD or Map Server. Um, how easy is it ah. to do that in Bridge without doing everything else? Right. So I'm just cherry picking, really. You know, you've got a style converter in there, and mm -hmm. if I wanted to use that without using anything else, is that possible? Yeah, so when you have the style already, that's what you mean. Yeah, I've got a style in QGIS. Yeah. I've got a project in QGIS, and I know that you know inside Bridge there's this style converter. I say, yeah. Okay, well, I just want to convert some styles, but Aha, I don't. Right. I don't need to do the GeoServer stuff. Right. Well, you cannot. Um, well, you can. So you can do the offline publishing thing. Yeah. So then you can uh, generate so, SLDs and so on. So that would give me a file set. Locally, yes. Locally, yes. so that would do it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. What you can also do is, it's more like the, the quick and dirty approach. There's also a style viewer in Bridge. It's a bit hidden, but it's, you find it in the, in the Bridge toolbar uh, yeah. in, the, in the QGIS menu. There's a style viewer, and we actually build it to like debug. <laughs> but okay. it, then we thought it was actually quite handy to keep it yeah. Uh, so you can have that open. It's also a dockable panel. And uh, then you will see, if you click on a layer, then it will generate on the fly SLD, Mapbox, uh, GeoStyler, and so on okay. in, in different tabs. So you can view them and copy paste them in whatever you like. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Thanks. Uh, I help those uh, who are also watching us. Uh, but uh, after that, yeah, we have questions from online. So. Yeah, he can go first. Uh, you haven't mentioned map server. What is the future in a bridge that, of, that's, of map server? That's correct. Well, it, it also happens to be that we, we as GeoCat, we are a, a geo server and a geo network company. So we, we don't do much with map server. I will gladly do all kinds of improvements for map server. But I have to get feedback from the community. And I never get any. Well, I get some from, from Paul, because <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's a map server user. Um, Paul van Genuchten, that's his, it's our former employer, but he works now at ISRIC. Uh, and he, they are using it. Uh, so that's helpful. But I would, yeah, I would really like some, uh, some help also from the developing community to make some PRs and improve the map server workflow. Especially on the style conversion side for to map file, there's some work to be done. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, it says, uh, is the functionality of uh, the ARC versions broadly in line with the QGIS versions? Yes. So the, the the reason why we are doing this this bridge five for QGIS is is to closely follow uh, what we're also building uh, in ArcGIS Pro bridge. Uh, so that will have a similar, uh, similar workflow with a dockable panel on the right where you can configure your SDI context and so on. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is there any difference between the Enterprise Edition and the Community Edition? Uh, enterprise QGIS, so function, functionality-wise, they are nothing is limited or something. They have the, the, the same functionality. The only thing is that we as Geocat, we also, to our customers, we have uh, a product for that's called GeoCat Live, so that's a fully hosted solution with Geo Network and Geo Server combined. And the Enterprise Edition features a connection option for GeoCat Live. But since community users will uh, not be enterprise users, <laughs> so they will never use GeoCat Live, we remove the GeoCat Live connection for uh, community users. That's the only difference. Yeah, we still have some time for some questions. Yes. Yeah, of course, and also the support, and uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that I already explained. Good. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, I just wanted to cl quickly clarify this uh, SLD converter in Kujis. The def default one is different than yours or the same? How do you convert from uh, Kujis styles to SLD? So, yeah, as I mentioned, we use this, uh, the bridge uh, style library there. Yeah. So that converts to GeoStyler as some sort of intermediary format, and then from GeoStyler to SLD. Uh, so it's different than this? It's, it's, it's different, yeah. Ah. yeah. And in, in ways it's better, in other ways it's yeah, not I, as I, good. I, so I there, there's, there's always differences. And then I have whatever some problems works. with this Kooji's default one, so I'll yeah. check this one. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> I have two questions for you now. Two? Yes. Uh, if they have time. Yeah, yeah, very quickly. First one is, um, uh, yeah, is it, uh, what is the feature parity with the ArcGIS product? Is it more or less an ArcGIS uh, uh, product? Uh, the other uh, qu uh, question is in the previous talks you guys have, there was a lot of excitement going with the GeoStyler but it seems it died away, so we just, as a community, want to know why or what happened. Well, um, we are still excited about it. The, 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 the main problem with GeoStyler is, is that it's a node application. And uh, QGIS is a desktop application. So we either need to, to actually leverage GeoStyler fully and also utilize it so that we don't have any uh, conversion workflow to support anymore. I, I mean, I would love that. Uh, but the trouble is that I either need to use uh, run a, a, a Node.js server locally, or we, as Geocat, we need to create some kind of online conversion service that uh, Bridge can access. And uh, that is still something that we are t uh, thinking about of doing, so that you for instance, at least have the option to choose bridge style if you don't have internet access or something, uh, or that you can choose the online converter and that will use GeoStyler. That's, that's something that we're thinking of. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I was, I'm still very enthusiastic about GeoStyler too, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to fit it in. Okay. okay. Then, thank you very much, and <laughs> see you in the next talk. Okay, thank you, thank you, Sandra.